All right, thank you for coming for our manufacturing month. Um, today we have Portland Community College for their manufacturing program. But before that, let's do um, some. Okay, so first let's make sure that you um, do your check-in and make sure you have um, your scholarship. And um, after the career event, make sure you immediately do your evaluation form so that it's still fresh. And if you um, wanna, wanted to ask questions, you can refer to this. Um, great questions and always make sure to mute yourself and then be fully present, pay attention. Don't check your phones, make sure that you're listening. And again, submit your evaluation. All right, Callie, I'll let you do your share. All right. So I am sharing sound and you all should see a welcome slide is that is that up for everyone okay awesome well hi everyone and thank you so much for having me yes i will talk a little bit about pcc and some opportunities we have there but actually i'm really gonna mostly just be giving you an overview about careers in manufacturing so I will start by sharing a little bit about me. My name is Callie and I go by Cal. I use she, her pronouns. And I am an employment specialist at Portland Community College or what's sometimes called PCC. So uh, I'm not sure how many folks can, if you can really interact much or if you're in a classroom where the teacher is leading, but I'm curious if you can show me with an emoji or a chat, how many of you know about PCC? I know we've got folks from all over the state. All right. Thank you. Got a thumbs up. Another thumbs up. Great. So I wanted to actually start by sharing a little bit about, uh, about my hobbies and how it relates to my job. So I think that hobbies are a great place to start when you're thinking about career exploration. However, I encourage you to think very broadly about your hobbies. So not just what you like to do, but why you like to do it and what part of your brain you like to use. So, for example, my hobbies are um, I really love to draw and do art. I play the drums. I play in the band. So I love to uh, write music and perform. And I like to travel and explore Oregon. So in my job, I get to be creative and use my mind to design learning. I get to sort of be like a performer as I teach. And my role actually has me moving around to all of our different campuses. So I get to see different parts of, of Oregon or at least the Portland area in my role. So as you're starting to think about careers this week, I invite you to think about what you like to do and maybe dig a little bit deeper about why. So, for example, if you really love video games, um, sure, you know, the world building and the immersive visuals are great, but also you are problem solving nonstop as a gamer. So if you are good at video games, you might be good in manufacturing because that problem solving is what manufacturing employers call troubleshooting. So someone who is able to explore an adventure and look for solutions that maybe other people haven't. Um, another example would be, you know, if you're really into comic books, um, what is it about those comic books that excites you? Uh, for me, I'm huge into the Marvel universe. And so uh, for me, I love the idea that the impossible becomes possible. So if that's something that you like, maybe thinking about uh, cutting edge advanced manufacturing. So working with things that have never before been seen in our lifetime and finding ways to create them. 
So before I get too far, I just want to invite you to share in the chat, uh, what are some of your hobbies or what are some areas of interest that you have or are curious about in manufacturing? So I'll give just a minute. And if there are teachers out there, if you can type in for your students, that would be great. Oh, hey, Grant, that's awesome. You're going to apply with us. We, we would love to have you. Sports, machining, great. All right, anyone else who's open to sharing a hobby they like, I would really love to hear from you. Great, thank you. Yeah, so sports are great, great for uh, manufacturing because it's, you know, working on a team to accomplish something. Writing, awesome. Yeah, in manufacturing, we need strong writers, especially people who can do technical writing. Okay, Danny's wondering what the jobs are available in manufacturing. Good question. We're going to get to that in just a moment. Aviation, that's cool. Yeah, there's definitely um, some, uh, we have here in the local area, Boeing flight controls are made. Uh, so flight controls for airplanes. Great, okay, thank you so much for sharing everyone. So let me move on and start to talk a little bit about um, manufacturing in Oregon. We'll go over some of those career snapshots. So some of the careers that are available. And then at the end, I'll share some classes that are uh, no cost that we offer through PCC that you might be interested in if you wanna learn more. So first, just starting with some fun facts. So manufacturing fun facts. Um, did you know manufacturing is one of the top five industries in Oregon? So a lot of people think, you know, oh, all manufacturing is going overseas. And it's true, there is a lot of manufacturing done outside of this country, but there's also a lot that's done here. And a lot of the manufacturing that's done here is a really exciting kind of manufacturing. So making uh, medicines that save lives, um, making parts for, you know, like people mentioned, aviation or cars, um, making these really specialized tools, making computer chips. So a fact that you, you know, might not be that interested or worry about too much now is 92% uh, of manufacturing workers are eligible for health insurance. So health insurance can cost thousands and thousands of dollars a year. So if that's something that your employer covers, then that means at the end of the year, you have lots of extra spending money. And I bring that up just because there are a lot of entry-level jobs in manufacturing and other entry-level industries uh, like retail or food service, which can be great for a lot of people, they don't have quite as high rates of um, covering health insurance for their employees. So over the next decade, about 4 million manufacturing jobs are expected to be needed, and about half of them are expected to go unfilled unless we can really inspire uh, your generation to get trained for these jobs. So what that means is there are jobs available, but it doesn't mean just anyone can have them. Um, they're looking for people who have some sort of technical training. Now, the cool thing about manufacturing is it doesn't require a master's degree. It doesn't even require a four-year degree. Um, a lot of jobs are very attainable with just a two-year degree or even just a certificate that you can complete in a year or less. So I'll talk about what some of those options might be. So here's some of the manufacturing that happens here in Oregon. You can see it's really diverse. So uh, Tofurky, there's lots of you know, food manufacturing. We have, uh, like I said, medicines, tools, uh, silicon wafers, which will then be used to make uh, computer chips, uh, microscopes, uh, dental equipment, solar panels. So if you go into manufacturing, um, you learn a skill set that can be transferred to different industries. 
after I present today, I will share this slideshow so that if you want, you can come and get all the links that I'll be sharing. Um, but I'm going to talk about this article um, from turn that off, sorry, uh, 10, 10 reasons it's great to work in manufacturing. So I'll just go over a few of them here with you. Uh, first off, it's exciting. So you are in an industry that is really cutting edge, working on things uh, that it may be in your career that I can't even imagine at this point. It's also a really safe industry. So it is very different from the old movies from the early 1900s in a kind of soot-filled factory where people are, you know, breathing in fumes. Uh, manufacturing really values safety. And so um, if you are working in certain environments, you might even be in the cl cleanest place in the world, what we call a clean room. So we'll talk a little bit more about what that's like. Uh, you're creating tangible things every day. So when you're done with work, you can step back and see everything that you've made. And something that's cool about manufacturing is there, there really is a career path. So you might start as an entry level worker, but a lot of employers in manufacturing will provide what's called tuition reimbursement. So you can go to school while you're working. And I won't go over all of these. I think we'll talk about them as we get as we get going. I see there's one more chat. Is the bottom CNC layer from Davis Tool? Um, I'm not sure which slide that was, but it might have been. I got pictures from a few of our employers, but most of them come from the PCC website. So it might be something, might have been something that we have on campus here. Oh, current one. Um, I don't think so. I think I found that as a kind of a stock photo, so I'm not sure. And actually, I do have uh, the sources, so I can maybe look. Um, sorry, it doesn't say here, so we'll have to just imagine. So uh, let's learn, let's jump into learning about some of these careers. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get to all of these in an hour, um, but the ones that I want to touch on are going to be ones that we train for at PCC. And that's because, oh, hello. Okay. Um, and that's because one, these are the, the fields I know a little bit more about. Um, and two, these are some of the areas that we have good opportunities for here in Oregon. So first, uh, machinists. So machinists use uh, not just their hands. It's not just a mechanical job anymore. There, there can be some jobs that are just mechanical, but often machinists are using computer software um, called CAM or computer aided manufacturing software. Um, and they are using um, CNC machines often. So CNC stands for computer numerically controlled. A work setting for a machinist could be almost any industry. So transportation, solar, uh, textiles, food, technology. And I think sometimes it's nice to just get a visual. So I will play a short video to give you an idea of what a machinist does. And sound should be working, but just stop me if you don't To hear build it. everything from robots to automobiles, workshops and factories around the country rely on the handiwork of machinists and tool and die makers. Starting from blueprints, sketches, or computer-aided design files, they set up the machines that produce parts. Once products are made, they file and grind them to meet project specifications, giving them a final smoothing and polish to finish. Machinists run computer numerically controlled, or CNC machines, that produce precision metal parts and tools. They may produce a large number of one part, such as automobile pistons, or many small batches, like bone screws for medical implants, or even one-of-a-kind items. They need to be skilled with a wide range of machines and techniques. Toolmakers craft precision tools for cutting and forming metal and create different gauges and other measuring devices. Die makers construct metal forms used to shape metal and make molds for shaping plastics, ceramics, and composite materials. Tool and die makers are trained to write CNC programs as well as operate the machines. Workers wear safety glasses, earplugs, and masks when needed to protect themselves during hazardous phases of their work. 
Schedules are generally full-time, with some shifts on evenings and weekends to keep production running around the clock. A high school diploma or equivalent is necessary, and skills in math and problem solving are important. Machinists may train in several different ways on the job, apprenticeship, or at technical colleges. Becoming a tool or die maker takes several years of instruction and on the job training. So you heard them mention um, math, and that's something you'll hear a lot in manufacturing, that they're looking for people who have math skills. So if you are someone who just hates math or maybe hasn't gotten the best grades in math in high school, don't worry, when you have a real world example where you're using the math for something that's right in front of you, most people find it's a lot easier to make sense of, a lot easier to learn. So if you were to continue your education after high school and come to PCC and take machining classes, uh, you would get support with helping, um, helping to learn the types of math that you'll need for on the job. So uh, you don't have to read all of this, but some people I know learn a little bit better. This is just kind of a reiteration of what we just heard in the video. So what I'm going to do after each video is pause. Those who like to read and refresh can. Everyone else can close their eyes, take a deep breath, and take a mindful moment here. All right, and I'll share this later, so don't worry if you didn't get to finish every last word. Um, and I recommend if you have a pen and paper there, take notes. And if you come across terms that you don't know and you're curious about, write them down. And maybe if we have time at the end, we can uh, talk about them together. And if not, you can do that on your own. Uh, but one vocabulary term that may be new to you, may not, are uh, micrometer or the caliper. So these are measuring devices that you would use as a machinist. And sometimes you're measuring something so teeny, teeny, tiny, it's like the sheet of a paper. So you need a specialized tool to be able to do that. Here are just some photos for you to get a glimpse into uh, some of the snapshots of a machinist's workday. So you can see these two are working on um, working using computer software here to manipulate the machines. So, okay, so this sounds like fun, but what am I going to make, right? What am I going to earn? So a machinist can earn anywhere from uh, about $15 to $35 an hour. And it's a pretty huge range because there are different roles within there and different um, levels of proficiency. So essentially, as you learn more, as you are able to do more, you can earn more in this career. So the average annual salary is about $50K or closer to 51K. And these numbers come from the Oregon Employment Department. So these are local. And keep in mind that, you know, there are a lot of different roles in there. So if you want to earn more, um, start to look at different employers and what they pay for different roles and find the roles that um, match what you want to earn and see what those trainings, what, what training is required for those roles. And we'll talk a little more about career exploration and how you can find that information out later. So if you do want to research further, here are some of the employers that hire machinists locally. And I, again, I'll be sharing these slides so you can look at this list later in your own time. And say you did want to get trained to be a machinist. There are many different options for you. At PCC, we have an associate's degree, so that takes just two years. But there are also uh, shorter certificates that you can get in CNC, uh, milling or turning, uh, manual machining. And these can take uh, just one year. Or we have a career pathway certificate that takes less than one year. So if you did that, you could learn a little bit, get your foot in the door with the job, and then come back and keep learning and advancing your degree to earn more as you go. 
All right, so that's a little bit about machining. And I will just show you what our website looks like here. I won't do this for everyone, but just so you know, if you want to explore further, every program has information about that role. So the role that the program leads to, um, information about the program itself, information about the forecast. So what are the odds that if you were to study to be a machinist that you're going to get a job at the end, right? So what's it looking like? There's information about the expected salaries. And then you can click on each of the different degrees to learn more about what classes you would take. And that's really fun. So sometimes you'll look through a list of classes and think, wow, I'm interested in, in so much of that. And other times, uh, not so much. So that's a good way to kind of drive your exploration is to see where, where you find that spark, where you find that interest. Um, all of our pages also show which parts of town we offer them. So I know not everyone's here in Portland, uh, but we do have a lot of online classes and programs too. Um, these programs are hands-on though, the machine programs. So we offer them in Columbia County at OMIC, uh, Oregon Manufacturing and Innovation Center. We have a training center there and at Sylvania campus in Southwest Portland. Um, the page also shows, you know, what you'll learn, the class schedule. There's videos where you can uh, learn more if you prefer to learn that way. Um, the employers that will hire you. So this is going to be available on these slides for all of the programs we talk about. All right. How's everyone doing so far? Am I talking too fast? Is this, is it helpful? We're doing good. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, thanks for the thumbs up, Grant. Okay, A okay. All right, thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right, so maybe you're interested in this hands on uh, career path as a machinist. Maybe you like tinkering and fixing things. But if you are more of a computer person, you're someone who maybe likes to be artistic, uh, you like to create things, but you really are drawn to that tech side of working on a computer, then maybe CAD is the career for you. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design and Drafting. So a CAD designer uh, starts with a concept and then develops the drawings and the digital models that will then guide the production of items. So uh, they will design items like machines, consumer products, uh, structural details, tools, um, basically anything that you can think of. Drafters turn designs for buildings, bridges, and gadgets into fully realized drawings that can be manufactured and built. Drafters use computer-aided design software to convert the sketches and specifications made by architects and engineers into technical drawings. They typically specialize in one area. Architectural drafters draw architectural and structural features of buildings for construction projects. These workers may specialize in a type of building or in a particular type of material, such as steel or reinforced concrete. Civil drafters prepare topographical maps used in construction and civil engineering projects, such as highways, bridges, and flood control projects. Electrical drafters create wiring diagrams that other workers use to install and repair electrical equipment and wiring in power plants, electrical distribution systems, and residential and commercial buildings. Electronics drafters produce wiring diagrams, assembly diagrams for circuit boards, and layout drawings used in manufacturing and to install and repair electronic devices. Mechanical drafters prepare detailed layouts for a wide variety of machinery and mechanical tools and devices. These layouts indicate requirements needed for assembly. Although drafters spend much of their time working on computers in an office, some visit job sites to collaborate with architects and engineers. Most drafters work full-time. Drafters generally need to complete a certificate or associate's degree at a technical institute or community college. All right, so you can read to review or take your 30-second stretch and breathing break.
Okay, so here's another vocabulary term for you, uh, orthographic projection. So uh, you can see from this top drawing here, if a CAD designer were to just turn over that drawing and say, here, make this, there are so many different ways that a machinist could interpret that. So the CAD designer does orthographic projection uh, representing three-dimensional objects in two dimensions by having all the different views here. So by seeing it in all the different views, you can see, okay, it's a box with a button. One side is shorter, one side is longer. Um, and here's, here's what it's going to look like. So here are just some photos showing some projects that a CAD designer might work on. Um, they can work on tools. This one might be some sort of robotic arm that they're building. Um, down here, there's something with a wheel that could be a, maybe a scooter or maybe a mobility device to help people. So the wages can range from about 18 to $42 an hour. Um, the average salary is about 60000 so pretty good for a CAD designer. Yeah, and here are some of the employers that might hire a designer. And the cool thing about this career path is that it's a very short uh, entry uh, education required. So it's really just one year um, or even potentially less, depending on what you want to do. All right. So next, let's talk about electronic engineering technicians. So Sometimes people are confused when they see the word engineering and they think engineer. So to be an engineer usually requires a bachelor's degree, so four-year degree, sometimes a master's, depending on what you're trying to do. There are all types of engineers, um, chemical engineers, there are mechanical engineers, electronic engineers. Uh, an electronic engineering technician is a two-year degree, and this is someone who helps engineers. So they would help with designing, building, repairing, and modifying electrical components, uh, circuitry, controls, machinery. They can work in all kinds of settings, uh, offices, hospitals, labs, factories. Um, in a hospital, uh, electronic engineering technicians are really important because they're keeping um, different machines that might be life-saving machines working and operational. All right, let's watch a mini movie here about electrical and electronic engineering technologists and technicians. How's that for a mouthful? A foundation of logical thinking fueled by math and mechanical skills guides electrical and electronics engineering technicians to help engineers develop a range of useful products, including computers, medical devices, navigational equipment, and more. Electrical engineering technicians draw diagrams and write specifications to clarify engineers' designs. They put electrical control equipment prototypes and systems together identify design problems, and then come up with ways to solve them. They also test parts to ensure their quality and write up reports on their findings. Electronics engineering technicians use machine tools to make parts, such as coils and terminal boards. They resolve equipment malfunctions and maintain electronic systems, including testing components and replacing defective circuits. They also design basic circuitry and build prototypes from simple plans. Electrical and electronics engineering technicians work in offices, laboratories, and factories, and may be exposed to hazards from equipment or toxic materials. However, injuries are rare if proper procedures are followed. Depending on production schedules, technicians may work day or night shifts. A standard work week is more typical in federal government jobs. Most positions require an associate's degree in electrical or electronics engineering technology. All right. So I'm just curious, curious, does anyone out there play guitar, in particular electric guitar? Maybe not. Okay, well, I was just going to say um, anyone who's interested in pedals, like 
guitar pedals, you've probably seen some of those uh, circuit boards. Yes, Tyler, okay. I would get along with you, Tyler. Okay, so electronic engineering technicians, you can read and review or you can take a pause and breathe. All right, here are some more photos for you to see. All right, so maybe you're interested, but what am I going to make here? Uh, in the Portland area, electronic engineering technicians earn between $21 and $44 an hour. Um, so not bad, especially on the higher end. And the average annual salary is about $66,000. Here are some of the places you might work. And at PCC, this is a two-year degree, so there isn't a shorter path for this one. All right, so a pretty similar, um, similar sounding path, but much different day to day work life would be a microelectronics technician. So what is microelectronics? It's basically tiny technology. So technicians in this industry, uh, they solve problems, they correct um, any issues in the manufacturing process and the final product. Um, they maintain and troubleshoot processing equipment. Um, they could be working on products in the medical setting, high tech, consumer products, transportation, really almost anywhere. And what we're talking about here is often just computer chips. And when I say a computer, I'm not just talking about a laptop or a desktop. I'm talking about phones, uh, computers that are in refrigerators or uh, any sort of household appliance, washers and dryers, computers that are in cars. Um, microelectronics is really everywhere and it's getting tinier and tinier and tinier. Okay, here's a day in the Alicia life. Chandler. I'm a manufacturing technician. I've been with Intel for 12 plus years. I work at the Ocotillo site on the Arizona campus. Originally, I'm from Tennessee. Uh, once we came out here, one of the things I like best about it is that 95% of the time, I'm pretty much guaranteed I'm gonna see the sun. So no lack of vitamin D. Uh, I enjoy getting out on the trails. I enjoy running, I enjoy trail running. I enjoy the outdoors. And Arizona provides that type of environment. I normally get to work around 5.30. I like to get here about 30 minutes early. Uh, my shift starts at 6 o'clock. Even though I'm bald-headed, I have to put on the hairnet. Uh, since I have a facial hair, I have to put on a beard cover. Uh, once you get in, you got to cover your shoes. you got to make sure you put on what they call the booties. Then that's when I put on my bunny suit. I enjoy the camaraderie that we have, um, some of the nicest guys that I work around. Uh, I enjoy uh, working with my engineers, some of the most intelligent guys and gals that we have that are around within the industry. I work four days on, three days off, and then three days on, four days off. So with a two week span, I'm actually on seven days. My pre-Intel years uh, life, I work seven days a week. The compressed work week allows me to go out and do things that I really enjoy to do, such as being outdoors, um, doing activities with my family, uh, things that I'm passionate about. When I was a kid, I enjoyed getting that first volcano for me and my dad was working together and we seen the chemical reaction. I do that on a grander scale. Uh, within my job, I work with a, uh, a link tool, a scanner and a track together and we make those chemical reactions happen on a daily basis. We take uh, four hours and we take a big quick break and then we work another four hours and take a quick break or whatever. We have our breaks within there. One of the things that the rec room, it provides for me, it provides for me to get off the floor, not think about what's going on on the floor to where I can get my mind away. I can get away for an hour, 
Uh, after I'm done with that, I'm able to get back into the routine and I feel refreshed. So how we wrap up at the end of the day is uh, we capture anything that's happened throughout the area. Once we capture that in an online document, we're ready for the oncoming shift. Once the guys come in from the oncoming shift, we share that information with them, whatever's going on within the area. If someone was given the opportunity to work at Intel, I would tell them to go for it. It's an awesome opportunity. It's an awesome job. Uh, it's one to where you have a plethora of career development opportunities. Um, they provide for their people. It's a great place to work. Do it. All right. And so they talked about that compressed work week of four days on, three days off, or it can be the, the reverse sometimes too. That's pretty common in manufacturing, not just microelectronics. A lot of people really like that because it gives them time to travel, um, take a three-day weekend, time to do other things that they like. There are also a lot of different shifts. So in manufacturing, a lot of operations are 24 hours a day. So if you're, if you're a night person, you can work a night shift and have the whole day to yourself if you want to. Not everyone likes that shift. It's, it's kind of a love it or hate it kind of thing. But for those who are willing to take a night shift, sometimes it can be easier to get your foot in the door. Uh, something else I want to point out in that video, you notice they are wearing that full white gown or what they call the bunny suit. So if you're someone who doesn't want to have to worry about fashion on a day to day basis, this is a good field for you because you wear that nice, comfy bunny suit all day long. And of course, these videos are pre COVID. So that's why they're just covering up to here. And the reason for that is they're uh, not not so much to protect themselves, but to protect the products. So with a, you know, a lens on a microscope, for example, the tiniest fleck of dust could make that lens unusable. Um, and same with a microchip or uh, say, for example, working on pharmaceuticals, any kind of extra bacteria or particles getting in could change the makeup of that product. So here you go, you can read or take a mindful few breaths here. Here are some photos again of people working in a clean room environment. Starting salaries in this industry are around 55,000. Uh, 55, uh, however, there is a very strong career path leading to much higher wages up to 90K even. So if this is something you're interested in, um, you do have to be willing to learn, someone who's willing to learn on the job and always be learning, but you can always be increasing your wage if you're always learning in this industry. Uh, there are a lot of employers in the area. In, Intel is, of course, one of the largest ones. But if you don't want to work for Intel, there are a lot of other companies as well. And uh, we have the associate's degree for microelectronics, which is a two-year degree. However, a lot of our students get hired before they graduate. There's an article uh, that was in the Oregonian today about how many uh, how large the need is for technicians. So uh, we'll talk about just one more area and then I'll jump over to sharing a little bit about our on-ramps. Uh, so welding is something you probably know a little bit about and welding you might think of a little bit more in construction trades, but welding is also used in manufacturing as well. So it's used in chipyards, manufacturing factories, um, contractors, government firms, repair shops. I'm going to skip the video for now uh, just because of time. And I think folks have often have a little bit of an idea of what more of what welding is and what it looks like. But it's a really fun industry for people who like to be creative, like to work with their hands, like to be able to step back at the end of the day and really see what they created. Um, and a lot of people who go into welding end up taking on welding as a craft and doing metal art as well. 
uh, good annual salary. Um, here are some of the employers you might work with. And at PCC, we have uh, an associate's degree, but we also have lots of different career pathway certificates. So those are shorter certificates that are really focused on getting new skills for a job. And the reason there are so many is that there are so many different types of welding, depending on what you want to weld, so what you want to combine, what the materials are, whether it needs to be a pretty, a good looking weld, or it needs to be a really strong weld, um, the type of welding that you would use would vary. So if you're interested, um, you would talk to a program advisor who would help, who would learn about what you want to do and then help you find the classes that you would take to be able to get there. So I heard you got to learn about bioscience a little bit from LAM already, at least some of you did. Um, and I know bioscience can be a broad field, including things like, um, you know, lab work or research. Um, but it also in Oregon especially has a manufacturing component because we have biopharmaceutical manufacturing. Um, so manufacturing medicines. and. Again, I'm going to let you watch this later at your own time due to our time limit. Um, but essentially, bioscience technicians, they assist uh, medical scientists or they work in a manufacturing facility. One of the big employers we have here is Genentech, and they make medicines that are saving lives. They have um, one that they're really well known for, which is a breast cancer medicine that helps people who have a certain type of breast cancer that has been harder to treat in the past. Um, so they might be operating and setting up uh, lab instruments or equipment, they might be monitoring experiments, they might be collecting data, making observations, calculating and recording results, um, or they may be doing some anal analysis of um, biosubstances. All right, so average um, Entry level wage is about 43,000. Industry average is around 70,000 annually. Here are some of the employers you might work for. And at PCC, um, the associate's degree is uh, really recommended for people wanting to get into this uh, industry, there are some shorter pathways that lead, can lead to this field as well. Um, but to be fully trained and competitive, you might be interested in that to your degree. So um, I'm going to jump ahead and make sure I can share a little bit about the on-ramp classes and then come back to this. So um, if you're interested in working in manufacturing, something we offer at PCC is what is called on-ramp classes. So they are no cost to you. They are mostly offered online, so you can do them from anywhere, even if you're not in the Portland area. And in the classes, you learn a little bit more in depth about the careers available uh, and the training opportunities that can lead to them. So you'll get to hear from employers. Uh, you'll learn about different types of manufacturing. You'll hear from uh, PCC programs. And then in our recent class, we also built some robotic arms. So students learn how to take measurements and try to scale and wire robotic arm. And so we offer these classes in um, not just manufacturing, but also trades, healthcare, and IT or information technology, tech. Uh, so these are during the day usually, so conflicting probably with your classes, but uh, you might be interested in taking one of the on-ramps in the summer, or those of you who are in um, alternate schooling environments and are available during the day, um, you'd be welcome to participate. Um, otherwise, keep it in mind for when you graduate. And these classes are usually about two to five weeks, so pretty short, uh, no cost. They're offered twice a year in each subject. So we have this term, we're offering the construction trades starting on October 18th, and then healthcare in November. Um, and if you are interested, we do have an interest form that you can fill out. 
So I'll put that in the chat just in case. And I'll also put my email address in the chat too. Okay, it looks like I accidentally sent that link to just Catherine, so I'll send it to everyone. Okay. So I work uh, at BCC with our Willow Creek Center. So at Willow Creek, we are what's called a workforce development center. So we help people with all kinds of things uh, related to improving their career, essentially, or finding their career. And so that means uh, we help people access funds for education. So when you apply for college, you can apply for scholarships, you can apply for financial aid. Um, but there's often also some kind of secret funding, some state funding or county funding um, that will come through the employment department uh, or locally here in the Portland area, we call our employment department offices, work source offices. So we can help you access those funds if you're eligible. We also offer uh, workshops and classes to help you feel prepared for college. So that could be digital literacy, uh, we also have financial literacy classes um, and then connecting to resources and uh, community events, uh, community resource groups, women's resource center, queer resource center, um, disability resource center, multicultural resource center, whatever. Um, Whatever you're looking for, whatever type of um, events or activities that you want to find, we're going to help you get to it. So uh, Goldilocks is asking, does on-ramp classes carry over when they graduate and go to PCC? Uh, so they're, they're non-credit classes, so there wouldn't be any credit to carry over. But that also means you don't have homework and tests. It's just more uh, activities and information for you. Um, yeah, so at Willow Creek, we help people um, connect basically to educational opportunities. So learn what they want to do. It's all, all free resources. It's a safe place where you can come, learn more, get resources, you know, share what's, what you feel are your concerns about college. And uh, we'll, we'll try to help you find what you need to get there if that's where you want to go. So, okay, I have a couple more things to share, but nothing is absolutely essential. So I wanna pause and just see if anyone has any questions for me at this point. Okay, well, you can still ask them as we go. But for now, oh, one came in here. This is cool. Oh, thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that. All right. So I just wanted to share a couple of resources. So this week and this month, you're going to be exploring manufacturing careers, and it might be a little overwhelming because there are so many different careers. Um, but a great resource is this website, My Next Move. This is what we've been using to watch the videos. And you can search by different types of industries. You can also take a, a quiz um, to figure out some ideas of careers that might be a good fit for you. And then say you want to learn more about machinists, you would click on that. And this website gives you all kinds of information about what they do on the job, the skills that are needed, um, types of personalities that do well, and then also the education that you'll need and the outlook for that job. So is this a job that's expected to grow or are you gonna graduate and not have a job ready for you? So this is a great website. And then this one, Careers Northwest is similar, um, but there's some really fun tools on here. So if you scroll down, I'm gonna share this link in a second. There's this really cool interactive map Okay, that's in the chat. And you can click around and see what's made here in Oregon. So currently we're in the garage, but you can scroll to different rooms. Say we want to go to the kitchen and click on different things or just scroll over different things. 
to learn about manufacturing that's happening here in Oregon. And so then you can click and learn more about that company. So we talked about microelectronics, uh, Toso Quartz, they uh, showed up for this microwave because they had something to do with the electronics in the microwave probably. So that's a really fun website. And then you can also uh, look at the careers similar to how we did on the other website. And they have it broken down by different areas. So let's take a look at manufacturing. And I'm just gonna choose kind of a random one here and show you. So on this website, you can see similar information and there are tabs here where you can learn about wages and then you can even find live job postings. So you can really see uh, what this person does. But keep in mind, sometimes these aren't 100% accurate. Like here for this model maker, I'm getting a job for a cashier. So that's not a model maker. And then a couple of things I wanted to point out about manufacturing jobs. Um, one is just a reminder that it is often shift work. So that 12 hours a day, maybe three days a week, and then the next week you work four days a week. Um, great for a lot of people, but just helpful to know that you might come across that. Not every employer is that way. Um, but if you are in manufacturing, there's a lot of overtime available, as well as what's called differential pay. So if you work a shift that's less desirable, you might make more money per hour. A lot of manufacturing jobs, not all, um, require standing on your feet and some amount of physicality. So bending, squatting, um, pulling, pushing, um, maybe even climbing or lifting. And a lot of manufacturing facilities do require a drug screening. Um, they are often second chance employers, meaning that if you did have some sort of criminal record, um, that manufacturing jobs could still be available to you. So what are manufacturers looking for? Um, in addition to all the skills that we've talked about and the training that you could get at PCC um, or at a college in the area you live in, um, pretty much all manufacturers and most employers are also looking for that positive mindset. So someone who's going to show up ready to work. Attention to detail is really important in manufacturing because if you uh, make a small mistake, it could affect someone's life. If you're working on a food product or a pharmaceutical um, or a part for a car. Huge focus on safety. So we talked about how manufacturing facilities are safe, but that is reliant on you. So you as a worker, making sure that you're doing what you need to keep your space safe. Um, employers really need someone who can be on time because, um, as I mentioned, a lot of these facilities are 24-7. So if you're not there, the operations are stopping or the person before you is needing to stay late. Uh, and of course, I'm sure you, you know, you're aware, but work ethic is huge, um, willingness to learn on the job and people who can work in teams. So those of you, you know, someone mentioned they play volleyball. Um, another person mentioned they love anything sports. So that is great experience for working on a team to get something done. And we already talked a little bit about math. So I'm going to use my last few minutes to just share a video, one last video with you. And this is from our new training facility in Columbia County. That's an all manufacturing training facility. It's super cool. Um, it is in collaboration with a research and development facility that has crazy cool stuff going on. Uh, they have a 3D metal printer. They have all kinds of wild stuff. Um, and here is a little bit more about that. Are you interested in exploring a career in the manufacturing trades? Or are you already a working professional who seeks new skills to advance your career? 
The brand new OMIC Training Center at the PCC Columbia County Center in Skephus is where you'll work with faculty and industry partners to learn the skills and professionalism needed to succeed in high demand occupations like machining, welding, and mechatronics. For example, employers like Rightline and Rainier are working with PCC to build an apprenticeship program. I am Natasha Allen and I am the Weld Process Manager at Redline Equipment. We make forklift attachments, so anywhere from uh, rotators, smart clamps, to single side chips. We do everything in-house, so uh, manual machining, uh, CNC operation, CNC mill, CNC lathe, welding, carbon arcing, fitting, uh, paint, assembly. I mean, everything is a skilled trade in the industry, right? The earning potential for trade skills is huge, not just locally in the Northwest, but globally. Uh, welding, machining specifically, um, it, it's monumental. There's job security, you can travel, and you can make a, a real career out of it. Harlan Williams, the PCC apprentice at Rightline, describes what he enjoys about being a CNC machinist. So uh, what you're seeing is as you're making, uh, a, drilling a hole or making a cut with a mill, you're slowly seeing the material peel away into little chips flying by um, based off the feeds and speeds that you've inputted or that your programmers have. And uh, it's almost like melting ice cream. So, uh, imagine putting your spoon into ice cream and just slowly seeing it seep down and then scooping it out. It's the same difference. It's just lethargic. It's wonderful. PCC has given me a lot of uh, training in uh, programming and uh, manual machinist work. And it's broadened my uh, view on what machining can be. Because when I first started here, I didn't have any sort of standing with machining. I didn't understand really anything. I thought this was all machining was. Uh, that it was just used to make forklift parts. I didn't even know I was making forklift parts when I first started machining. Uh, and it's really broadened my, my horizons on what machines can do and how valuable they can be. Uh, you should know when coming to this kind of work, uh, there's good employment opportunities, there's good job security, and you will see a wonderful growth in the job market as time goes on. Curious how you can get the skills employers in the trades need? Here's what Bonnie Adams, metals and manufacturing instructor at St. Helens High School says. The OMIC PCC Training Center offers so many opportunities to our students. Um, it opens the door for advanced welding, which the high school schools simply cannot offer. We don't have the time, the machines, um, and the training. Students get a lot more one-on-one -on -one and it's highly condensed. It means that they can get in a matter of weeks what would take us months to years to offer. Now to give you a preview of where you will learn, here is Andrew Latner, the Executive Director of the OMIC Training Center. Working with industry partners and PCC faculty, we plan to offer pre-trades programs, apprenticeships, and more traditional career and technical education programs in trades like machining, welding, and mechatronics. Our industry partners wanted a training facility that replicated a real-life manufacturing environment. The complexity of these programs requires a thoughtfully designed building that can adapt to the changing technologies and will give our students the type of experience they'll see in the real world. We're working towards welcoming our first students as soon as possible and we look forward to the day when we can safely invite all of you to a grand opening celebration. Are you interested in state-of-the-art training right here in Columbia County for a career in advanced manufacturing? If yes, this is a great opportunity to get started right out of high school or if you seek a new career. We welcome all ages and levels of experience at PCC. Your next step is to apply for admission to PCC. Applying just takes a few minutes and is free of charge. Go to pcc.edu admissions to take the next step toward your bright future. All right, well, thank you all so much for being here and listening today. I think that's my time, so I'm going to hand it back over and students, you know, best of luck as you figure out your next step. And if you decide um, that manufacturing is for you, feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you to get to the right place at PCC.
Thank you so much, Cal. Um, I we I've personally I've learned a lot. I'm actually going to check out mechanical drafter, technical designer, and welding. <laughs> and um, I did not know about next my the my next move website. So that is very very helpful to like figure it out. Hey, I don't want math, so maybe I'll take something that. <laughs> um, so students, make sure um, you fill out the evaluation form. And if you have any questions, just feel free to chat. 